Good morning to you. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the difference between cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So this is a topic that seems to be very complicated for a lot of people, but trust me, it's actually not that bad. So we're going to zoom into this plant here, and what we see is a plant cell, right? And if we zoom a little bit further, we're going to get to this little organelle here called what? Called the chloroplast. Okay, the chloroplast is special to plant cells. And what does it look like? So it looks like this. We bring it in. Okay, here it is. And if we open it up, we can see what's going on on the inside. So here we open it up. And we can see there's a whole bunch of stuff going on, but that's not of concern right now. Right now, we need to go and zoom into this little structure here, this little disc like structure, okay, called the thylakoid, because that is where um, this photophosphorylation is going to be going on. Okay, so here we zoom into it. This is the thylakoid. We can slice open the thylakoid, and we're going to slice it open um, right in the front so we can see what's going on inside of it. Okay, so we, we slice it open, so now we can see what's going on on the inside. Okay, so now I'm going to show you, we're going to make this a little bit bigger so it's cl more clear to see what's going on. So here, we zoomed in, made it a bit bigger, and we can see some of these important proteins and enzymes in the membrane okay since this is the thylakoid these little proteins are in the thylakoid membrane okay they're called the thylakoid membrane so to understand what cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation is we are going to look at um, what normal photophosphorylation is okay so let's get into it so what happens is here in these little photosystems, these are little photosystems. If you don't know what these little structures are I'm showing here, here is a little image, okay, which I labeled them as so, so that you can refer back to this to make sure you understand what I'm talking about. But getting back to it, there should be some electrons, okay, in these uh, photosystems, okay. Now, when uh, light shines. So we know the sun is involved in this stage. So by the way, we're talking about the the light dependent reactions. Okay, this is the part that happens in the thylakoid. Now, when the sun shines, okay, we know it gives off some energy, some light energy. This energy is going to go into this photosystem, and as it goes into it, it's going to hit these electrons and excite them. It's going to transfer the energy from the light energy into these electrons. So they're going to be excited and they're going to move right out of the photosystem and have a lot of energy. Now, now what happens is, is they get captured by these little blue carrier proteins, these proteins. Um, and when these proteins capture this electron, it's going to move them. It's going to move them towards this little orange structure here called the proton pump. Okay. Now, what's the purpose of the proton pump? So we need to know that outside of the thylakoid, so outside of these little disc structures in the stroma, in these empty spaces, we have a lot of um, protons, okay, H plus molecules. Now these protons um, travel through this molecule here, but they can only travel through this pump if electrons allow it. So electrons have a lot of energy, right? And once they reach this proton pump, they're going to transfer their energy into the proton pump and activate it. And when this proton pump is activated, all of these protons will come flowing right through them through this pump. Okay, they will come flowing right through this pump. Okay, now when these protons are building up inside the thylakoid space, this empty space, it will get crowded really quickly. Right uh, now, let me show you something. Obviously, bear in mind that not all of the protons went left to the, the outside of the thylakoid. There's still some left. Anyways, when they build up here, it gets really tight. And so they have no option but to go through this thing here. This thing um, is an ATPase. And this um, chamber or this channel is made for, for these protons to travel through. So this is like a one-way door. Um, these protons can only go in one way. They can't exit through this one but they can exit through this one. So when it gets really crowded, these protons will travel through this pump. Okay. Now, importantly, as they travel through this pump, they, they activate this pump, they activate this ATPase. And this job, this ATPase's job is to convert this molecule here, which is an ADP because it's got 
two phosphates because adenosine diphosphate ADP will get converted into guess what ATP Now ATP is adenosine triphosphate. So essentially this molecule here, as these protons are flowing through, um, as these protons are flowing, flowing through, they activate this pump to transfer a, um, a phosphate group onto the ADP to form ATP. Okay, so this continuously happens and so a lot of these ATPs are made. This process of making ATP from ADP using light, because light triggered this whole process to happen is called photophosphorylation okay photophosphorylation and this makes sense because pho because photo means light and phosphorylation means to add a phosphate group okay to add a phosphate group so this whole process photophosphorylation is the process of using light which activated this whole cascade of reactions to make ATP from ADP okay so now now that we know what this is oh yeah by the way the process of light um, activating these electrons to become activated is called photoactivation. Um, that's not that important for now. Um, now, what happens next? Because we now uh, want to know the difference between cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. By the way, this process that I just described is called cyclic photophosphorylation, okay? Because it happened in one straight line, okay? So let's remove this word phosphorylation. It happened in one straight line because the electron was excited here, it traveled, it activated this, and then this was activated. It didn't happen in a loop, right? It didn't happen in a loop. It happened in one sequence of events. So, oh yeah, right, this is wrong. It should be non-cyclic. This is non-cyclic because it happened in a straight line. It wasn't a loop. The electron got excited and this whole eventually led to ATP being formed. So it's non-cyclic. There was no cycle involved. It was just one sequence of events. And this sequence of events can continue happening. So it can happen again, and it can happen again, and again. But it's in, it's in one straight line. So that's why it's called non-cyclic. So what about cyclic? So now we got to remember, this electron here doesn't stay here. doesn't stop here. It continues to go on. Okay, It gets captured by this carrier protein, which will transfer it to this photosystem. This photosystem can excite this electron. Okay, So let's make this clear. So, like this. Now, light can be absorbed by this photosystem, and this electron can be excited to go up here, okay? And we know normally um, we have some protons outside, right? Now, these protons will always be outside. So, when, once this electron arrives, something special is going to happen. By the way, we also have NADP plus outside, NADP plus. So, we got NADP plus and a proton, and now this electron arrived. When this happens, now, this NADP and H plus will combine with this electron to form a product. This product is called NADPH. So we're forming a lot of these, okay? Now, NADPH normally is, 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 is a product of this light-dependent reaction, and it's going to accumulate just like ATP. And these two more products are very important in the next stage called the light independent reaction, okay? So this is important, bear this in mind, because the light independent reaction happens outside of the thylakoid. So here we have another diagram, the thylakoids, and we know the thylakoids created um, these two important molecules, NADPH and ATP. But when they accumulate in the stroma, so outside of the thylakoid, they will take part in the light independent reactions. In the light independent reactions, NADPH will get converted back into NADP+. So bear this in mind. This is important. So we know now that during the light dependent reaction, it gets formed, NADPH, from NADP+. But during the light independent reaction, NADPH that was formed gets converted back into NADP+. Now... This is very important. So when the light independent reaction stops um, or is slower at converting um, NADPH back into NADP+, so when this process, let me show you, when this process is slow, 
then we know NADP plus will, be, um, will, will not be enough. And when NADP plus is not enough, that means there's not enough of NADP plus recycled back here, which means um, that these electrons are going to be waiting for nothing. So they're going to be enough. There's going to be enough electrons, but there won't be enough NADP pluses because they're not being recycled, which means these electrons will accumulate here and wait, but then nothing is there to combine with. And this is bad, or well, not bad, but this means we're wasting energy because these electrons are now not being used. So what happens is then if this electron notices there's no NADP plus um, being, being made to, con to combine with, it's going to go and travel w along with these carrier proteins back, back. So it's going to come back. It's going to make a cycle because this electron traveled all the way from here, all the way through here, but now it's coming back. So it's making a cycle, it's making a loop. So when it comes back, it's going to come back to this proton pump because that is the only place it can have another job because its job is either to activate this proton pump or to activate this um, or to combine with NADP plus to form NADPH. But since NADP plus is not there anymore, it's going to come back and do another job. So it cycled back, okay? It cycled back and it came here. And we know when it activates this pump, protons can flow right through. And when protons can flow right through, they will accumulate here and now they will, they will flow through this pump, this ATPase, and, and convert and help activate it to convert ADP into ADP, ATP, which is photophosphorylation. photophosphorylation. Only this time, um, this electron didn't, didn't come from here, right? This electron went all the way through here, came back and returned. So it, was a, it made a cycle. This time we call it not non we don't call it non-cyclic photophosphorylation. We will now instead call it cyclic, okay? Because this time these ATPs were formed through a cycle because these electrons traveled all the way through all the way here and came back towards this one. So it's cyclic. Whereas non-cyclic was when it when it went straight here making protons coming and making ATP. So that's the difference between cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. At the end of the day, they both of these processes use light photo to make ATPs from ADP, okay, through this mechanism I just showed. But they have a slightly different pathway of getting there. One gets there in a straight line and one gets there through a cycle. So I hope this makes some sense. And you can see it's quite important to know how both the light dependent and light independent reactions play a role in this process.